You want the melancholic? You got it. <laughs> I did. I remember a couple of years ago, I was doing a workshop at Canmore Book Festival, and, and Ken Rooks, the guy who was booking the festival, um, had this workshop, and it was called. Uh, it was along the lines of like the, the most depressing song I ever wrote, or something like that. And it was myself and Garnet Rogers <laughs> and uh, and uh, Tom Russell and someone else and. Uh, I was hosting the workshop, so I turned to Tom Russell and I said, uh, "Tom, you know, you're the you're the person who's come the farthest for the gig, so you should start." And do you know Tom Russell? Oh yeah, yeah, great, great songwriter, uh, New York, Texas singer songwriter. And Tom goes, uh, "Yeah, okay, James, uh, <clears throat> this song, uh, uh, well, it's about a uh, it's about an American flyer during the Second World War gets shot down over North Africa and he's captured by the Tuareg." Uh, in northern Mor Morocco and uh, take him up into the hills and they uh, cut out his tongue and they put out his eyes and they make him dance like a bear in the market. <laughs> this is a song called Blood Oranges. And so, like, you know, where are we going to go after that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all just laughed. <laughs> this song about a night in December 1989 about a Portuguese registered freighter called uh, Captain Torres, and uh, there was a hell of a storm blowing out in the Cabot Straits, and they'd lost engines, and they were bobbing around like a cork uh, out there in the, the Straits, and they radioed into the Coast Guard station in Sydney and said they were in trouble, and Sydney said, there's nothing we can do for you, we can't get the helicopters up in this kind of weather, there's no ship anywhere near you, you're going to have to ride it out, and they tried riding it out um, for about an hour and a half. And then they were hit by a rogue wave. The ship split along the keel and uh, started to go down. And uh, the captain realized that, that in the lifeboats there was going to be no chance of survival. Uh, and on board the ship, uh, no chance. They were uh, figured they had about an hour and a half left. And they uh, radioed back into Sydney and said, there is something you can do for us. And they patched the radio through the phone lines at the Sydney uh, Coast Guard Station, and every man lined up in the radio room, and everybody made a two-minute phone call home to say goodbye. Oh you want a melancholic? <laughs> That's the short story, the long story. About three years after I'd written and recorded the song, I was playing at uh, the Woodford Folk Festival in Australia, just outside of Brisbane, and uh, came back home, and I got uh, an email from this woman named Carol Hellman. And uh, she said uh, that she'd been uh, at the show and she'd heard the song and she'd been very affected by the song. And she got home, she lived in this little town called Bellingen mm -hmm. in uh, New South Wales. And uh, they had the neighbors in for, for tea and everybody was, was quizzing them about, about what they'd heard at the festival and what they'd liked. And uh, she said that there was something eerily familiar about the story that she couldn't put her finger on and she was sort of she got the CD out and she started explaining this song to her neighbors when one of her neighbors sort of stopped her and said, the reason why that story is so eerily familiar is my husband was the captain of the ship. She was six months pregnant at the time. And he being the captain, he never got a chance to get on the radio to, to make the phone call home. So she never got a phone call from, from him. And uh, Carol asked me to send down a CD. Um, and I sent down a CD and a, and a note to her saying that, you know, when I wrote the song, it wasn't, I, I hadn't meant to exploit the memory of her husband or those men, that I, I just wanted to honor their memory. Um, and she wrote back and she said she couldn't get past reading the words, but she put the CD away from when she thought her daughter was old enough to listen to the song. So, uh, so it's got a It's got a chorus you can sing on. Most of the guys on the ship were from New Caledonia, which is a French colony. And that's why the chorus to, to the song is in French. Uh, and uh, the chorus is, La mer ne pardon pas, the sea forgives not. And uh, <coughs> when I recorded it, we recorded it with a long two minute play out because I wanted something at the end of the song that was the same length as the phone call that each guy got. And I wanted some kind of spoken word over that and I didn't know what you'd say in a phone call like that. So I used Cyrano's last letter to Roxanne from Cyrano to Bruce Rock. And if I can remember, Cyrano's last letter, I'll do that.
call the captain Torres how high the sea gale ten the engines failing no quarter no sea they know when the wrong way Phone call. 